Hi, Fashion Dolls. It is Variation Tuesday, June 27th, and welcome to an all-new episode of Style by Stevie. Our very special guest today is a model and actor, and I'm excited to have him here in the dollhouse with us, ladies and gentlemen. Let's welcome Anthony Knight. And he is here, ladies and gentlemen, so let's get right into it. I had to cut the fan off a little so that you guys will be able to hear me. Please forgive me if you guys see me pat a little bit. A girl is trying not to melt over here. So let's get right into it. Ladies and gentlemen, IG is tripping on us. They're acting up. And I'm over here patting, trying not to melt. <laughs> Hello. Me. Hello. Oh, welcome to the dollhouse. How are Everything you? Everything is good. Everything is great, actually. Really good. How's things with you? I'm over here about to melt. I'm doing fine. So. I know. <laughs> I see. It is a little humid today. A little humid. Yes. So before we get this interview started, how has 2023 been for you so far? Whew. 2023 has definitely been a roller coaster ride. It's probably my best description. Um, I've made certain standards and certain goals for myself this year, and I've exceeded all of them by far. Um, so it's been definitely been a very remarkable year for me. Yes. And you're not only a model, you're an actor. You've been doing some acting work as well, too. So before we get into that, tell us how you got your start into acting and modeling as well. Well, um, it was after COVID. Um, I've always been into writing and um, acting. I'm, I'm an animated character in general. <laughs> you know, I'm, I have a really good memory, and I'm just really good with people. And um, one time I was at work, I was... Um, serving coffee or whatever. I worked as a barista. And um, I uh, remember the guy's order from like two years ago. And it happened to be Tom Schulman, who is, um, he's a uh, executive producer of the show Power. So, yes, yeah. So he was like, you have a good memory. Have you ever thought of acting? And I was like, no, I've never thought of acting. So um, he gave me his number, exchange numbers. And then two days later, I got a call from his uh, casting company to do one of his movies he was shooting in Atlanta called, um, well, now I can, yeah, now I can tell the title. It's Dirty Down South. Before, before I was under in NDA, so certain things I can't disclose, I can't disclose. But. Got you. So who are some of your influences when it comes to modeling and acting? Who are some of your influences? Uh, I got a lot of them. I say um, when it's modeling, it's Naomi Campbell. Um, love her. Love her. Um, one of a really good model, uh, supermodel I just recently met and been working with a lot, Victoria Henley. Um, you know, they there's a typical thing about models that they don't have brains, but there's a lot of highly intelligent models um, yeah. out there, a lot more than people think. So, you know, it's more than just taking pictures and, you know, like, smiling for the camera and looking good, you know. And another thing is, it's all about balance as well, too. Not only is it just taking pictures, but it's also about being able to be business. -y. Yes. And one of, another yes. one of my favorite supermodels is Tyra Banks. Yeah. I love how she was able to not only be in front of the camera, but to give other people an opportunity to go and excel in their career yes. in the fashion yes. world, too. And have other avenues of outcome like cosmetics and yes, yes, ice cream brand. So I mean, it goes on and on. It's being able to balance that out. My next question for you is: Where do you see yourself else in the business world? Uh, at the rate I'm going, and like I already see myself there. You know, it's just about doing the work to get there. Um, I already have a clear goal of what I want to do. I see like my end game goal is to have my own modeling talent agency for uh, acting, sports, and music, 
you know, um, and I have my own production company. I actually um, just recently graduated from NYU Tisch. Yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm also doing the schoolwork and, you know, everything that goes with the whole entire industry. Just so whenever I get to the point where I feel like I've mastered it, then I could, you know, be a model entrepreneur um, or just an entrepreneur in general, you know, and multiple different revenues. Yeah. I'm also um, currently re-enlisted. I'm listed in um, Harvard Business School. So, yeah. So I'm doing the business end and the, the everything, the cameras, from the script writing to um, the acting, to the uh, building budgets, to the planning. To uh, the make definitely networking. That's uh, that's one thing I'm known for is networking. I get a huge network of uh, people, huge network, and um, it's just utilizing that to my best ability. You know, it's not what you know, too. You know, uh, I mean, a lot of it is talent, but you know, I want to I want to be fully rounded in this industry. You know, yes, it's a tough and industry. It, it is the fashion world in itself because I've worked in the fashion world for a long time, and you know this. How yeah, what it is. So yeah. for you, because I've already, I'm pretty sure you've walked the catwalks for New York Fashion Week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've seen photos of that. So for you, which would you prefer? Do you prefer doing on-set photo shoots or being on the catwalk I in real time? Because I can only imagine backstage what goes on at New York Oh, it's New crazy. Yes. It is crazy. Uh, New York Fashion Week. Oh, my God. Speaking of which, I just booked, I'm going to be doing Fall Fashion Week. And I'm also going to be doing next year winter fashion week. So I'm already booked for those two. So, you know, that, that was a big, that was a big plus. And but what I love. Congrats too in the comments. I see you guys are coming in. Thank Shout you. Out thank to you. Yes. I know, they show a lot of love. I love it. Um, yeah. So uh, I, I prefer to do the runway. Um, I like digital print, you know, and like uh, commercial modeling as well. But the runway, it's emotion, you know, like yeah. with me, it's just, a lot, of, a lot of people ask me, you know, oh, why can you always have a serious face? To clear the air, you're not supposed to be smiling. I have a, a really confectious smile. So when I smile, I light up the room. So I don't want to take away from the clothes that I'm wearing. You know, so a lot of time I have to keep a straight face, you know, in straight posture and do my walk. But one thing I love about the walk and I never plan what I'm going to do. It just comes on like a light switch, like uh it's usually what the vibe of the clothes are telling me to do. So yes. that I bring, it's more of me bringing the clothes to life and using a little bit of my attitude and confidence with it. But it's just more or less about the clothes, you know, when it comes to the runway. And that's what I like it. Um, the digital and the commercial aspect is more about your features, you know, more about the right angles and all that. And, um, you know, when you're walking, it captures that moment. It captures that energy. So I love I love to do the runway aspect more than you know the commercial and print. I'm definitely I have I have like ten different magazines out right now. I don't really bra I don't really brag that much. I don't post stuff that much because I'm humble. I'm very humble. I'm very thankful for what you know I've actually accomplished. Like I said, I exceeded any expectations I had for myself this year. So definitely, um, definitely was a good time. And it's been an amazing year for you. You've been posting so much. We've been seeing you right along the journey. Yeah. So yeah. my next question for you is what makes you the happiest? What makes me the happiest? Yeah. Peace. Being at peace with myself. Honestly, that's what makes me happy. I'm very inspirational. Um, I, anyone that knows me, I try to lift everybody up. Um, you could just say the right thing to the right person to make their day. Um, I don't go out of my way to try to make, you know, people's days bad. But what makes me happy is me being happy and being able to make myself happy. That's, you know, that's key right there. It's so it's so easy to get caught up in, the, you know, the day-to-day -day rhetoric and um, this, the media and stereotypes and everything that the world puts on you. You got to be happy with yourself. You got to be happy in your own shoes. You got to love yourself. Um, you got to tell yourself you care about yourself, tell yourself you're beautiful. You know, even if you don't believe it, you got to repeat it because ultimately it's, it's what you plant in your mind. You know, your mind, it's like a garden, you know, you could plant one half of it um, with roses and all other types of fruits and vegetables. But all it takes is one, one weed to kill all of that you just planted. So you got to always believe in yourself. And that's honestly what makes me the happiest is just be, having the energy and 
having the consistency and the persistentness and um, making myself happy, personally happy with who I am, what I'm doing with my life, um, with other people, um, just make myself happy, you know? So honestly, that, that's my secret. <laughs> And I love what you said. You said peace. I'm all about protecting my peace. That's actually something that I put on my vision board, which is protecting my peace and making sure that I stay centered and in tune with myself. It's all about who you surround yourself with and your circle. And I must say that I'm very, very happy with the circle of people that I have behind yeah. me. And I'm pretty sure you have a great team behind you. Yeah, honestly, well. it's crazy. Like, um, when I first started this whole thing, I started out with like 2,000 followers and uh i just was exploring you know the algorithms the reels all that stuff and then i realized you know you get your best bet whenever you're being yourself when you're vulnerable when you're allowing yourself to be you because anybody can act like somebody else or be like somebody else but one of the hardest things to be yourself so I, that's, that's one thing I've, that's how, that's the key to my success. A lot of people ask me, you know, oh my God, you got so many, you know, so many famous people, you, you're doing so much. It's, it's being yourself and be happy with yourself. Cause yeah. if you're happy with yourself, you will, um, you know, you'll attract all type of people, you know. And authenticity is key. I tell people that all the time. And I said it yesterday um, with my guest that I had on the show, um, Amiri. Amiri Thompson, oh, yeah, yeah, we talked yeah, yeah. about that. We talked about authenticity yeah. and staying original, staying true to yourself. And um, I've t explained the story to so many people about being offered national syndicated television shows to be out here. And I said, uh-uh, I, I, if I do anything, it would be on my own terms. I'd rather yeah, stay yeah, original yeah. and be true to myself. Yeah. And you guys have heard me say that numerous, yeah. on numerous episodes of the platform. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's just like that's that's where I get my peace, you know, being true to yourself. Like uh, I do a lot of reels too and stuff like that, but it's just I'm being me. It's me in the reel. It's me being serious. Me being real, so you can feel the emotion. It's sort of the same thing with the uh, the runway walking. It's any way I can make an emotional connection. You know, that's the best way, you know, to keep anybody fully engaged. So, you know. What is your creative process like when you are on set for photo shoots or you're walking on the runway? What is your creative process? Like? Um, my creative process happens generally, it depends on the vibe. So like the beat, generally the beat, uh, the clothes, definitely the clothes, the aesthetics of what I'm wearing and uh, just the landscape of the area. So it allows me to gauge my audience and um, filter what I might do or do in it just, you know, naturally happens. Sometimes I, um, for example, if I don't feel comfortable in what I'm wearing, like there's been uh, shows, nothing against any designers. I love the designers. They're amazing, you know, I got a couple endorsements. Uh, I love my designers. It's just, um, if I'm not, if I don't like what I'm wearing, I don't know if I could represent it in the best way I, I possibly could. So that's when I actually have to act like um, I'm enjoying myself, act like. It's something I would actually wear on a regular basis. Right. And make it come yeah. to life in your yeah, yeah. all yep, about. Yep. So if, yep, yep. if you could open any fashion show for any designer, what would be your dream fashion show to open? Oh, God. Versace. Donatella Versace. Gianni Versace. That, that's yeah, psh, my heart. <laughs> yeah, if I could do that. I mean, it's actually very possible because um, I do have a couple pending future things going on. But that's if that's 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 whenever I want the Super Bowl. Like to me, that's the Super Bowl to me. I know there's a lot of amazing designers. Once again, love the designers. There's a lot of amazing designers out there, but that'd be like my Super Bowl. And I so could see that it's all about manifestation and putting it yeah. out in the universe um, and making it happen. So I could see that. Yeah. Now, artistry. You've mentioned music as well, too. What is the songwriting process for you like? Uh, uh, oh, I love it. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm from the 80s. So I'm like uh, 40 years old, roughly. So um, in our time, you know, the 80s, 90s, we had conceptual music. I'm all about concepts, you know, um, about things that everybody can relate to, you know. Not everyone can afford a Maserati. Not everyone can afford drop-top Bentleys. Not everyone can have 
gold, you know, all the teeth and all the crazy stuff. It's more about relating with people, you know, it goes back to making that emotional connection. And that's, that's basically the type of music I like to write. And it could be anything from a story, something, a situation that happened in my life that I just turned into a song. I do the same thing. Like I'm actually in the process of uh, writing my own TV series. It's going to be called the 16th year. Yep. And uh, it's, a, it's about my life, but I'm going to obviously augment it a little bit and change it. But uh, it's just, you know, reliving that and bringing that back to life of what, you know, I, how I was growing up and where I went to, you know, to get to this point where I'm at in life. So it's sort of like an autobiography, but doing it, you know, with, you know, nonfiction characters. <laughs> All right, so you guys know this is a fashion platform, and we talk a lot about style and image here on Style by Stevie. So the next question for you is, you got to share us a funny story that has happened in the fashion or beauty-related world, if you could. Oh, I definitely could. <laughs> All right, uh, I was um, last, actually it was recently, um, it was in uh, Fashion Week in Los Angeles, and um we we're doing a show out in the fashion district over there. And then I did a show later on in Beverly Hills. So, uh, so one of the designers um, wasn't really prepared for the fitting and all that stuff. So, you know, you have to do the rehearsal, the fitting, the practice walk, the lighting, the make sure we have the right palettes, the color palettes. There's a lot that goes into it. It's not just walking down the runway, you know. Taking pictures like that. Yeah, a lot of people think it is. It's I, I, could, I rehearsal for like eight hours before I actually do the show. So, yeah. So it's a lot that goes into it. But, um, yeah, it's, it's – so I was um, walking. I was in L.A., and the designer had me put on these pants, and I'm like, they are too tight. There's just no way these are going to work with me. Like, they are too tight. So, <laughs> so we were lining up um, to go out. Uh, for the designer. I won't disclose any names or anything. But um, thank God I was like the fourth person in line. So I went to step forward after the one after the first two people went. As I stepped forward, my pants ripped right up the middle. So I'm like freaking out. So I'm like, all right, I got to drop out. I got to switch my pants. So um, I basically hurry up, ran through on because you got to change quick change clothes and go like it's bang 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 you don't even get a chance sometimes to even button yourself sometimes you just zip it and okay hope nothing pops up <laughs> but uh yeah so i ripped right up the center of my pants and i just had to run and change real quick and then i made it just in time for my time to go out but the designer questioned what happened and i'm like the pants were too you know you know they weren't tight i mean they weren't good enough and as far as my fitting wise no nah, could have been better. <laughs> and this is real yeah. time. You yeah. guys are looking to get into the modeling world. These things happen in yes. real time. When that designer says, okay, showtime, they call you on stage and the lineup, they want you to walk out, you you have to yeah. go. So you have no chance to second guess it or nothing. It's just like being pushed right off the cliff. Go. And then you open up and it's a sea of people. And I, what I try to do is I, um, I always try to find and the most interesting person in front of me or like the best dressed person directly in front of me and just stare and make eye to eye contact with them the whole time. Just to, you know, block everything else out. Because once you come out of that uh, shoot, it's like, oh, wow. You're in a whole another it, world. You transform into a whole new person. Yeah. People see as well. You never know. And the crazy thing is you never know who's in the crowd. Like one thing that threw me off at New York Fashion Week, I walked out and Ryan Seacrest was right in front of me. I tried not to look down, but like I did a little quick side glance. Think, thankfully, no photographer caught it, but I did a quick like, wow, hold on, he's right there. Like that's Ryan Seacrest right there. And then I noticed like uh, the the granddaughter from Gucci was in the crowd. So it was just you got to really find something in front of you, focus on it because it can be very distracting. And, and real yeah. time, I'm telling hey, you guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so again. More fashion-related things. How would you describe your style in three words? How would you define your style? Uh, I would say sexy, edgy, and reserved. Okay. And I see a little bit. We see a little bit of it. Do you have somewhat of an input on your looks for your photo shoot? Well, the crazy thing is I've always dressed like a model. Yeah, so... 
I show up looking better than models sometimes. And, you know, you know, people are always like, wow, but I just always naturally been inclined with fashion. Um, I used to work in a fashion industry where um, back in the day, um, not too long ago, where we sold um, expensive sunglasses and regular eyeglasses. Um, but I was on a corporate level where I was actually behind the scenes at the runway shows, putting the matching the models with the right faces and the right glasses. So I sort of have a title it. So I've always sort of been very fashionable when it comes to that. But, you know, I mix it up. I like to do a lot of, um, I'm more like a, a red carpet type of style. Red the carpet. Same. Yes, yes. You know, the bigger, the better. It's fashion. Like, you got to show up and show up. Like, you know, that's that's what it is, you know. <laughs> exactly. I see you guys are coming in. Welcome, Fashion Dolls. We are here with supermodel Anthony tonight. Ooh. So here's the next thing. If you could give advice to anybody on how to embrace their own individuality when it comes to getting into the modeling world, what advice would you give them? Do everything as if you cannot fail. Mm. Um, how I did it was, is um, I went in and this was, what's the worst that can happen? Uh, how do you fail at something you never tried before? Mm. You know, so if you do it, anything as if you can't fail, um, there's a lot of growth. It'll be painful at first, but, but it eliminates doubt. You know, I'm 40 years old. I'm actually pretty old compared to 90% of the models I walk with, <laughs> and they, especially with the younger guys and never compare myself to nobody because um, everybody's individual. We were all made individual and whoever we choose to show up to be that's who we are and um you know and it, you're definitely super judged you know but at the end of the day as long as you don't allow that to get to you and be like i said it goes back to being happy and being comfortable in your own skin it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks of you you got here like that's the craziest thing like so i got a story about that um so New York Fashion Week was my very first any fashion gig so i literally started right at the top like right at the top and then um when we were walking i had no i never get nervous for none of this stuff because it just comes a lot natural to me you know years and years of practicing and being behind the scenes and just you know knowing the landscape of everything and um i was uh never walked never walked on a runway you know never did it professionally never did it, it was my very first time and um i wasn't nervous at all and then we already had our lineup and then all of a sudden they announce, they make a big announcement. They're like, oh, America's top model, Victoria Henley just walks in. And I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. You know, she's like behind stage with us and she's saying hello to us, talking to us. She jumps right in front of me. So this is my very first time walking any major runway. So I did get a little nervous at first. She turned around to me and said, uh, she tapped me on my shoulder and was just like, relax, you'll be good. You'll be fine. And I had to walk right after her. So, you know, she went out, murdered it, did her thing. And I went out and I just killed it. I didn't, I didn't even think about it. It was, I literally just, all that doubt and everything, me thinking about it went away. Cause the very, the very first thing I told myself before I walked out on the floor was, you can't fail at like this. What's the worst that can happen? You've never done this before. So go out there and give it your all. And I did, and ever since then, I've been on fire. You know, I'm doing every major. I'm uh, doing Miami Fashion Week in a week from now and Miami Swimwear Week. So I have two different shows down there. I have uh, three different shows in New York City um, upcoming that I actually can talk about. Um, we're doing Runway 7 Fashion Show. I'm doing the Magnifique Fashion Show. And then I'm doing an exclusive fashion show at um, St. Paul's Cathedral in New York City as well. So... Uh, I've been killing it with the model. Um, I got booked for uh, Fashion Week, New York City next year in 2024. And I also got, as yeah, yeah. I also got booked for um, Fashion Week in South Africa. So yeah, so I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm getting international. And I just recently, speaking of which, I just recently just got signed on with a uh, major international company uh west haven management group so i'm actually going to be actually in international now you know and with acting with everything so our guest tomorrow abraham ian is with west haven management. Oh, yeah 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 so, yeah yes he'll be he's, he's, he's doing this he's doing this thing he's he's you know like and that's the one thing it's like even at this level that, that being signed with this prestigious group um 
I still am going to be the best version of me. You know, I'm not going to compare myself because there's some super, super like powerful people, big models, people that, you know, been on, been in GQ, been in Vogue, did Versace, did all the things that I'm actually reaching to do, you know, working towards doing. And um, I'm just going to stay true to me and be the best version of me, you know. And Vintage said it in the comments, be the best version of yourself. Yes. That's all you keep doing. Yes. Be your yes. best version of yourself. Love you, Q. <laughs> yeah, so it is time for our games here with Anthony, all right? Yes. So the first one is called the Rapid Five. And Anthony has to tell us five things that he can't live without, all right? And then the next one is going to be called Turn the Tables. We did this yesterday with our guest, Samiri. And this is where my guests get to ask me questions. Anything passion-related, fashion, life, goals, yeah, anything, whatever. It's open season. Know. Open yes. season. Yes. So let's start off with the rapid five. What are five things that Anthony can't do? Uh, a Diet Coke. Okay. Uh, my macchiato. My almond milk macchiato. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, avocado. Exercise and sleep. Okay. That's his five. All right. Yeah. Fashion dolls, it is time to turn the tables. Shout outs to Liz Music. She is a New Yorker. So make sure you guys go and check hey, her Liz. out. Very beautiful. She says she that does. there's no one like you. You are uniquely made and flourish. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Thank the keyword of the day class is what? Originality and authenticity. So let's go on over to turn these tables here. So I'm going to pass it on down to Anthony. And Anthony is going to ask me some questions. And for my new viewers out here, because I see a lot of new viewers, you get to know a little bit about me and what are my likes, dislikes, passions, goals, dreams, whatever it is. Take it away. Oh, uh, yeah. We're going to start with what is what I know you're just naturally a passionate person, but what's the drive behind your passion more so would be my question. Mm -hmm. Um, My mom, my mom, I, I get it from her. She's a Libra. I'm a Scorpio. So I guess I feed off of her energy. Ever since I was born, I've always been the one that's like, okay, I've got to one-up this person. Me and my brother, we have been somewhat very competitive in a way. But now I would say my passion comes from my mom. Right. She's been that the biggest awesome. influence in my life, always inspiring me, always encouraging me, always rooting me on. And my girlfriend, my friend, my sister, Felicia, she's in the comments. So definitely, we've been friends since high school. And she's been like a sister to me. She's always encouraging me to keep going and to never give up. So that's where the passion comes from. Yeah, yeah, and my yeah. yeah. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. Um, so um, what what would be your most, you think would be your biggest opportunity in uh, the whole entire fashion industry? I know you've been in it for years. Um, you've definitely done your thing. You definitely have your, <laughs> you know, you got your, definitely got your creds. Um, just by, you know, the multitude of great guests like Vanessa Williams to, you know, Ronnie, to all different types of people. Um, what would be, you know, your, uh, you would think would be your biggest challenge with that? My biggest challenge, my biggest task, having to start over. Um, and this will be my advice to anybody who has had to start over. It's okay to begin again. There is nothing wrong with starting over and rewriting and getting into a new chapter. And that would be my advice to anybody getting into this business. It can be scary at first starting over, but the good thing about it is it's like rewriting a whole new chapter for yourself. You Definitely. are in charge of your mouth and you are in charge of your destiny and nobody can deter or take away from your future because you own it. You're the author, you're the writer, you're the yeah. editor, you're the publisher, you're all of these things. So that would be my biggest challenge is having to start over. Yeah. Okay. I love that. I can deal with that. Um, so, uh, I know you travel a lot, um, and traveling is, is, I love traveling. Don't get me wrong, but it can be annoying. Um, what would be your, um, what was your favorite destination you traveled to out of all the places you've been? Oh, I would have to say Atlanta. Like, oh, of yeah. course I've been to New York, but Atlanta. Atlanta, of course, the love Southern it. thing is the Southern thing. I'm from South Carolina. Yeah. So it's a Southern thing, the Southern hospitality when I went, I had such a great time and it was actually for a trip with some girls. So we had a great time. Yeah. I love Atlanta. I, that's, oh my God, I'm actually looking at houses there. 
Um, it's either there, or Texas, just so I can be central to New York and uh, California. But uh, Atlanta is what, like, every time I go, I stay an extra day or extra two days. Last time it was an extra four days. So I don't want to leave Atlanta every time I go there. Just like you said, it's it's a different world down there um, as far as uh, the communicable. the um, I mean, there's drama and everything everywhere. But for the most part, you know, I would say something that most people don't have have is um there's a lot of gratitude down there a lot of people are very thankful for what they have and the grind the grind is crazy down there like everybody's grinding um i mean it's hard to see honestly i didn't see very little homeless people there um you know and i stayed in midtown um i usually stay in midtown at the um the hill in there so i'm central to everything but you know you very say very few homeless people there um everybody's grinding everybody's working with each other uh, especially in the black community, they just build each other up. It's, it's so surreal, like, um, and just so welcoming. It's like, uh, for example, I go in New York, I see someone, you know, of our, our, um, race, I get nervous. I go down there. It's more like, Hey, what's up, brother? How you doing? You have a great day. It's just, you're just not used to that, you know, being a little up north and, and it's just, just that, that, and even with the, um, the, uh, all different races out there. So everybody's in a really good mood. And um, everybody's very peaceful out there. I love Atlanta. Definitely. It's, again, it's that hospitality. Yeah, that's something. That's real. It's a real thing. It's a real thing. All right, fashion dolls. Go ahead. I'm sorry. You had another question? Oh, yeah. I'm not done. No, sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. um, so um, what does your day look like? I know you have a very busy day, very rigorous schedule. Um, how do you, uh, what, what time do you start your day, basically? I start very early. Sometimes I'll get up at six because I have to take my little niece, I call her my little niece, the puppy out yeah. and things like that. And then I do, of course, housework. I make sure that everything is away and organized before I get ready and prep for the show because there's a lot having to set up and make yeah. sure that everything up correctly, line, all of that. Yeah, yeah. So, that's basically what my day consists of. And then afterwards, I get to spend time with friends and family. There's nothing like being around yeah. family. They mean a whole lot. Yeah, to me. me too. Uh, honestly, now that I've been traveling a lot more, even with my like brothers and sisters, really close friends, people I haven't seen in a while, I make sure when I am around, I reach out to them and I make that connection with them while I am around. Just because I know I'm about to get extremely busy, so it's like, and you're extremely busy, so just those moments, you know, that that goes part of what my piece too, you know, being able to do that, see them, and just be genuine, real, authentic. I don't have to filter what I say, and you know, be you know, be politically correct or any of that. It's just me being me, you know, with my family, you know, or you know, friends, you know. And that's the best feeling they bring out the happiness in you because you're always on like you said you're always on the go you're always traveling you're always on the road and then to be able to be with family is the best feeling and i couldn't trade it for the world no, it mean no. a lot yeah yeah definitely through all the flashing lights the money everything it's the simple things i i that's why another reason why i'm super humble it's the simple things you know everything all right, fashion dolls. Do we have any questions for myself or Anthony that is turn the tables? And this is a way for sort of the people to get to know who I am, the hostess, because I'm pretty sure a lot of people have questions and concerns that they want to ask either one of us. And my last question for you is what advice, because you've been in the fashion world for a long time as well as myself, what advice would you give to somebody who's looking to get into the model? Uh, Get used to rejection. Yeah. Rejection is redirection sometimes. Um, you know, in your home city or where you're from, or, you know, you might be big or whatever, but don't let it go to your head. Um, be humble, you know, get used to rejection and just don't take it personal. Just realize, you know, there's, you can always do something differently. It's not about, damn, I did this or blaming it on someone else. You can just always do something differently and just finding that peace with yourself. Um, definitely. God, listen, rejection is God's protection. Could be leading you to something even bigger and better than you. Yes. Your entire 
like. And trust me, I've had a lot of doors closed in my face. I've had a lot of no's, but it hasn't stopped me. I've always been, yeah. it's the quote by, I think her name is Ann Rand. And she says, you tell me no, and, and I will show you either way. And that is, for me, the best quote ever. I live by that mantra. I've always been the one to be determined. And yes, you got a question from Liz. She wants to know what comes to mind with these five words. Vivid, immerse, alive, trust, and journey. Ooh, those are amazing. Um, vivid is, you know, basically, with me personally, vivid is like uh, just being as um, visual as possible letting your emotions, your expressions, your body language, you know, when it comes to modeling, being vivid is, you know, it's all about the body language and uh, expressing yourself through body language and, you know, creating that image as well on whatever you're trying to capture. Um, immersive, um, that goes back to me being, uh, personally, I just naturally do it, you know, making a personal connection with people. Um, we're all different. No one's going to be the same person, but if you make a personal connection with someone, that's a good thing. You know, um, that's definitely a good thing because it means you took time to, you know, find th things out about them, be on the receiving end of, instead of just dictating and dictating the narrative, you were also, you know, listening as well. You were the audience versus being the narrator. So, um, that's what, uh, comes on my mind when immerse, um, alive. Oh, you better live. You only got one life, you know, there's no reset button. Um, time is a huge thing with me. That's my biggest currency. Uh, you'll never get time back. Um, money, you know, like you said, don't ever be afraid to restart all over. Um, you don't get time back, but as long as you're alive and willing to fight, you're always going to be successful at what you do as long as you don't give up. Trust, trust is huge. Um, you can't trust. Trust everybody. Um, I've had a lot of bad run-ins in this industry. I'm actually, I'm not even going to mention names, but um, uh, someone owes me a large sum of money um, that I did a modeling gig with. And um, yeah, and I have to take lit litigation route. You know, I have to get higher lawyers and do all that stuff. So trust is a huge thing. Um, people will tell you if you can trust them or not just through their actions. So yeah. uh they could say they could say whatever they want to say, but their actions is gonna uh, trust. So trust is huge with me, even though you know I do have the expectations that pe most ninety percent of the time, most people won't you know will infringe upon your trust at some point. Because once again, we're not perfect. So with trust, you just got to be forgiving and um, trust that next time you won't allow whatever situation happen to happen if it's negative, you know. And then uh, the journey, oh, it's the best thing. The journey is the the nights of you you know telling yourself, "Darn, am I really built up for this?" Um, the nights of uh, staying up reading a script, trying to memorize all these lines because you got to audition tomorrow and you got a five page letter and you don't even think you're gonna do it, but you still keep going and still keep going until you know your body just drops. Um, journey is. Uh, being promised that you're going to do X, Y, and Z and then being let down. Um, journey um, is, uh, you know, traveling and missing a connecting flight and having to buy another flight just so you can get to your venue on time, just so you can do a major runway show. Um, journey journey is uh, the, the red carpet events, the exclusive after parties, um, the reference list is, the referral list is, um, it's just, yeah, that's, that's journey to me. And that's the most important part of anything is if you don't appreciate the journey, you'll never have, you'll never, when you get to that goal, whatever goal you do set, you'll never appreciate that goal because you didn't appreciate the journey and what it took to get there, you know? And our guest for tomorrow just joined us, Abraham. Um, he will be here tomorrow at four. So we have another supermodel coming in the building, and they're both signed to the same management team, West Haven. So it's a pleasure to be interviewing both. Yours, his is right after yours. So how does it feel? And I'm pretty sure you guys will run into each other on stage. Oh yeah, and definitely, definitely. It feels great, honestly. I look at him, and he's like amazing. You know, I've looked at a lot of his work, and I'm just like, it inspires me to 
to um to go to think bigger you know uh not that i didn't think big before but it's just it's just super inspirational you check out his page look at his stuff you, you'll see exactly what i mean it's, it speaks for itself it goes back to what you were saying with the vivid it's very vivid yes and liz says thank you very much anthony yeah Yo, you're welcome liz definitely do we have this is question break question hour do we have any questions for myself or anthony ladies and gentlemen um while you guys are typing i'm going to feed you guys with the word of the day which comes from Misty Copeland. She says, start unknown and finish unforgettable. It's going to be humble beginnings. You have to start from somewhere, from point A to point B. But, and the lasting result, always continue to keep going after your passions and your dreams. And that comes from Misty Copeland. All right? Yes, that was um, amazing. Yes. Abraham says, thank you. Thank you so much. Welcome. Agent is concerned in the modeling world how do you feel about that um honestly i don't like i said you got to do everything as if you can't fail um and it's just aging i think older the older generation knows more about um they're more comfortable and more confident themselves than the younger generation would be very few times you'll find younger kids that have that it's something you learn over time you know the confidence and with the older group you know you think about it some of the biggest model entrepreneurs the modelpreneurs, we call them, um, are older people, you know, like the Tyra Banks, the Naomi Camerons, the Armanis, the um, Victoria, like we're a lot, they're not, we're not, we're not young, but we're at the same time, we're not done. We sort of, we sort of get the, we sort of get the set the new wave pretty much for the, set the new standards, uh, next, you know. Generation. Yeah, because uh, for example, in the 90s, you had to look a certain way. You had to dress a certain way. Early 2000, I would say all up to 2010, they got a little bit more lenient. Now it's more of being realistic versus, uh, you know, pigeonholing people because in the modern industry, you used to pigeonhole you. You have to be a certain height, certain weight, certain uh, bus size, all that. And um, you have to, you know, now it's super diverse because you get more bees with honey than you can with vinegar, you know? Yeah, it's okay, Gucci, you want to have a $2,500 shirt, but someone that's a size seven might not be able to wear that, you know, but want to be, but be able to afford it. But, you know, you just cut off a customer that could have possibly, you know, be wearing something that you had. So designers realize they have to become more diverse, you know? Everybody's different. The world's different. There's people that's, I've done things with, you know, people are 300 pounds plus, beautiful people, tall, tall people, very short people. Um, the world's not just six foot, you know, or six two or, you know, 160 pounds, 150 pounds, 130, 120 for the women, you know, the world's, the world's realistically not that. So I love that diversity. And one huge thing for me is um, how uh, it's becoming more segregated, like with uh, everybody. Um, there used to be a lot of backlash with, um, the gay community, um, there was a lot of segregation and, you know, a lot of hate towards them, even with the blacks, you know, uh, just certain different type of models only got in. It was just mainly, you know, a specific group of people, but now it's super diverse. I go up in there, men, women, you know, they, them, it's, it's, it's popping. And I believe that that takes fashion, that involves more people in fashion, which where these designers can gain more money, also a bigger following as well, because you're not just uh, pigeonholing your customers, you know? They're included. It's all about inclusivity. Yeah, yeah. And we have two more questions for you from um, Abraham. He wants to know, what do you think is the most challenging in the industry? I would say the most challenging in the industry is uh, booking. Booking is very challenging. For example, uh, New York Fashion Week, I did not expect to get picked. You know, there was over 20,000 models cast for that, and only 200 got picked. So I'm part of the top 10%, you know. So it was just like, it was, that was, it was, it was nail biting. Like, it really was nail biting, you know, seeing all those people and all line up. I was like, how the hell am I going to get into that? So uh, I would say the booking aspect is more because you could show up on time do everything correct but you won't get the gig so you can't let that get to you you just got to keep going you know and the next 
Next question is from Liz. She wants to know, is there a chance in modeling if you're in your 40s or 50s? Uh, yeah, hell yeah. I'm 40 years old. Uh, I've been on uh, two billboards in New York City, Times Square, and L.A. Um, I've traveled. I've done a lot of shows. I'm doing a lot of commercial work that's coming out soon. Been in 10 different magazines. Um, I actually got a couple more magazines coming out shortly so 12 so it's just it is it's just life it's just all about you like what do you want to do do you want to allow them to tell you no or allow yourself to put a restraint on your age but it's it's like you know you're just showing up you know like i said clothes they don't have an age group you know and we talked about this in one of my most recent shows ageism which is a thing in the business it used to yeah it's yeah, like, it's changing. You have a shelf life. Yeah, and it's changing. And then, you know, actually, um, we you mentioned her earlier. Tyra Banks was uh, basically the the one that opened that gateway for everyone. Black skates, you name it. She did it. She opened that gateway. The older crowd as well, because it was just like she was older. And well, you know, she's she's in her early fifties. You know, she's getting up there, but she still she still does her thing. You know, so it's like. Uh, they can't really put a shelf life on designs. You know what I mean? I know there's trendy designs. For example, you know, they bring back a lot of couture Versace. You know, that was made 30 years ago, but it's still relevant today. You know, they're still doing the Baroque pattern, the Medusa head, like Gucci took away, you know, the the Gucci links and they just recently bought it back, the Gucci monogram. So it's just like, you can't, you can't do that with fashion and expect not to do that with people. And that's, you know, it was a learning, learning, um, a learning curve that a lot of designers are getting over, you know, learning that, oh, we can make more money off the masses versus just going after one group of people. Abraham says, I believe there's a place for any and everyone in a world where you're effortless and you're passionate yes. about what you do. Amen to that. Yes, definitely. Let me make sure I didn't miss any questions. I see you all are coming in and joining the conversation. Do we have any more questions for myself or Anthony? This is question hour, fashion dolls. Um, so crazy that we're talking about this. This is a thing. Ageism affects people, not just in the modeling world, but in the acting yeah, world. Yeah, mentally too. Yeah, it affects people definitely mentally in the acting world because I realize a lot of people are like, wow, you're 40 and you're doing this? Like, that doesn't make you nervous? And I'm like, no, uh, like, I this is all new to me, so... You know, I'm acting as if I can't tell, so I'm not putting any restraints or, um, but, you know, there are barriers, but like you said, you know, some redirection may open up another doorway. Like, uh, I, one of the fashion shows I didn't get into, I ended up booking an even bigger one. So it was like, it worked out, you know, it was the LA one, like an LA show that I was going to do, but it was like a lower budget one and I ended up doing that, you know, the higher budget. So it was like... <laughs> You know, it, it's like, you know, you can't just limit yourself or let uh no or, you know, oh, you need to work on this. You need to work on that. No, you don't need to do none of that. You just need to tell yourself you love yourself. Look yourself in the mirror and say, I matter. And I'll get it the next time. Oh, yes, definitely. For sure, Liz. In the music world also, it's everywhere. everywhere. Acting, yeah. the music, to the fashion world, ageism and People are now shining a light on it. Um, I talked about one of my favorite actors, Morgan Freeman, and I talked about Marla Gibbs. You guys know the yeah, show. I, yeah, Marla I was. Gibbs I actually is, filmed with Marla Gibbs. I have a show. You can see my picture on Instagram, and it's uh, the show Finding Happy, and it's on Bounce TV. And I'm actually really good friends with Marla Gibbs. Yes, and she's still acting. So it just goes to show there is never a limit or a age on your passion. The Probably. secret, yeah, the yeah. secret, the secret thing is you look at the music industry, the modeling industry, the um, acting industry um, as a whole, even the sports industry, the oldest people are the highest paid people. Yeah, You know, Jay-Z Jay -Z is one of the richest rappers and he's one of the oldest rappers. Um, a lot of Drake, you know, he's uh, getting up there on the age spectrum. He's, he's doing very good. Um, Tyra Banks is doing very good. Um, Keanu Reeves, um, Denzel Washington, and Morgan Freeman, people like them, that's 50 million. They pay him 50 million just to show up. 
uh, Beyonce, you know, she's 24 million just to show up. So it's like it, age, age is actually, I think they, they're the ones pushing it. That generation, that gap is opening it up so more people of older age can get into the industry and be successful. You know, even Tahari Pension, you know, her too, you know, she's, she's in her forties. Um, she's doing her thing. Oprah is older in age. She's doing her thing. So you got to think about it that way. Yes, they have more time, time in the game, but they also came in later. They didn't come in from kids like some of the Disney kids and people that were raised up in the industry or had mother and fathers that were actors, you know. All right. So that concludes that part, Fashion Dolls. We talked about ageism. We talked about getting into the fashion world and anybody who's passionate about it. So do we have any other questions for myself or Anthony Fashion Dolls before we wrap up? Um, before we let you go and we conclude, are there any other gems that you would like to drop with your supporters? Because a few of your supporters came in in the audience and they were watching like this yeah, yeah, yeah. others. Are yeah. there any other gems you would like to impart before we wrap up? Um, I can actually confirm this. I'm actually single. Um, I've been going for a divorce for a very long time for about eight or nine months, but next month is the final court date and everything is going to be wrapped up in. Um, so yes, I am single everyone. <laughs> uh, it's been speculated. I don't really share personal information like that. Like you say, it's about keeping your peace and your uh, privacy sometimes, but, uh, that's something I can definitely drop on people. A lot of people has been asking me, but yes, I'm single. And I plan All to right, stay. Put, yeah, I plan to stay that way out. for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it, fashion dolls. So you are going. You have a lot going on this summer, up of, all the way up until the fall. Are yeah. you ready? That is the last question for you. Are you ready? Yeah. Like, um, for example, uh, two days ago, I just got finished filming the Bur uh, movie Good Burger, and I had this interview today. I have another interview tomorrow. Um, next week is fashion week and swimwear week in LA. I mean, in Miami. Um, then after that, two weeks after that, I start filming a show for Netflix, which I cannot disclose, but it's going to be a very popular show on Netflix. Um, and I'm going to, you know, it's going to be, it's, it's pretty decent role. So I'm pretty excited about that. Then I got all the fashion stuff going on at the back end of the year and then all the way up until next year. So, and then whatever I book in between. So it's definitely about to get busy. All right, fashion dolls. There you have it. So let everyone know where they can follow you and they can check out your projects because you have a lot going on. Yes, yes. Um, you can follow me on Instagram. Um, you can follow me on Facebook, the same name. Um, uh, the other, I'm learning to get away from, like I'm trying to get into Twitter, but it's not, I don't know. It's just, it's a different world for me. Uh, tick, TikTok, TikTok is the same thing. It's a different world. But uh, I like Instagram just because it's like pictures and reels. And I mean, everyone else does their own thing, but Instagram's more interactive to me personally. And it's more like relationship building, network building. So I do like Instagram and Facebook. Facebook's more my personal life where I share more things, you know, with family, friends, but Instagram's more my professional life. So it gives me opportunity to network and, you know, all the people that do know me and the people that don't know me, you get to know me a little bit differently. Um, they're saying, Liz said, continue success. Thank you for the follow, Anthony. And I just followed back. And Abraham, who will be joining us tomorrow, says, yes. congrats, congrats, congrats. Yes, yes. See you soon. Um, See you soon. <laughs> all right, Fashion Dolls. That concludes our interview with Anthony Knight. I had such a great time. And we've been had this yeah. in the works. So I'm yeah, excited. Yeah. We yeah. had a great time here. I would love to have you back again in the winter. We, I know I'm all booked up for the fall, just like you. Yeah, book so, me. Um, yeah, you can definitely book me. Uh, I would love for you to catch me after Milan. That would be, and that's in September. So that's another big announcement. Uh, yeah, Fashion Week Milan. Definitely, we in there. We are in there. We are there. So I would love to catch you after that. All right, sounds like a plan, and we will keep in touch, ladies and gentlemen. Anthony Knight and joining me tomorrow. He's already here. Abraham will be joining me tomorrow. And we will see you then, Fashion Dolls. Thank you all for Thank you. Here. Thank you. Have you a good too. day, guys. Have a good evening, guys. Thank you, Stevie. Appreciate you so much. You are so uh welcome.